Okay, my friends, look, this unit is how to manage how to manage human resources. Now, the first thing that I want you guys to understand is that there is something or there is a function or there is a department or there is a group of people better that is called functional human, sorry, functional managers, functional managers, all right? So we have functional, functional managers here. Hmm? And in the other side, we have project managers. The person that manages human resources in a project, which is the project manager, needs to understand this division between these two roles clearly, clearly. All right, why? Because the manager, the, the manager here, the functional manager, is someone that will be helping you to build, to build what? What do you think? Let's just start with that one. Why, why, we, why we project managers, why we need to be friends with these guys here? Because these guys will help us to build what? Uh, our project what a specific part what a specific function in our project what a specific group this the stakeholders uh, yes yes you're very close our very, team exactly right our project team all right so these guys here the functional managers will give us some individuals to become our project team. So, so that is the, the starting point of this unit. Is you understanding that you are different to these guys, yes. But just because you're different, it doesn't mean at all that you cannot work with them. In fact, you need to work with them because this is one of the most important key stakeholders in project management. The first thing, the first thing that these guys here, the project, the functional managers will give you is the team, is the project team. Hmm? So we need to negotiate with these project managers. We, sorry, I am a little bit confused because of the whiteboard is, is mixed there. Uh, we need to, we project managers, we need to negotiate with functional managers. So imagine that the functional manager has a team of six. Hmm? This functional manager will need to give you, let's say one individual for your project team to have one individual. So now, the functional project manager doesn't have six, has five. And then you negotiate probably with another functional manager that has a team of 10 to give you three individuals. Now, this functional project manager has seven. So this is costly. This is costly for this functional manager. This is costly for this functional manager. Why? Because these seven, these seven guys will need somehow to do the work that was done before by 10 people. If that is not possible, the functional manager will need to hire other people temporarily to work in the department. Or, the functional manager will need to decide, all right, our output, our output in terms of what we produce for the organization 
will be reduced. And that is costly too. All right? So I just want you to understand that the first thing that we need to do when we manage human resources is to become friends with these guys. Now, friends is a colloquial word, I know. But just, you know, to, to, to speak in clear language in terms of what we need to do. We need these people here to understand what is the project goal. We need these people here to understand that we need to develop and form a team. We need these guys here to understand that we, as a project managers, we never, we never have a fixed team. We don't. We don't have a fixed team. We cannot say, oh, this is my team and it's going to be my team next year and it's going to be my team in two, three years. No, we don't have a team. We don't. So we need to call a team depending on the project that we're managing. And when we call in that team, we need to extract, right word, we need to extract that team from other functional teams. Is that clear, guys? Good point, good point. All right, now, why these managers are called functional? because they have an area of a specialization. They have a function, an individual function in terms of how the organization operates. So these guys here are very specialized, whereas the project managers are more generalistic. They are more general. Now, let's, Talk about some examples of functional managers. Give me one. Sorry, maybe um, uh, consultants? Con cons consultants, uh, try to explain that a little bit better. Just, just if, if. Let's say, for example, um, if, if we're talking about, uh, mm, let's say, uh, an, an exchange for, let's say, a foreign exchange company, right? A company that sells and buys fo uh, ex foreign uh, currency. Forex. And so, right, at Forex, right? Uh, yes. And so maybe a consultant who is specialized in Chinese RMB and someone who is maybe more specialized in dollars, let's say. Could that be an a, a example? It's a good example in terms of we hiring an external agent or advisor to become part of the team. And that is possible too, yes? But no, the, the particular example here is more aligned to tell me a department within that company. And the manager of that department is the functional manager. So examples of functional managers, Patricio. The manager at the store. For example, the manager of marketing. That's it. Has to be yeah. specific to one area of the business. So the marketing manager. All right, good. Another functional manager, please. The finance manager yep. or IT manager. Yeah, so the fin manager. The IT manager, another one, please. Uh, what's the name? Uh, I'm trying to, I was thinking of it in Spanish. Human resources, yep. maybe? Yes, of course, of course. HR manager, another one. Production manager. Yes. Floor manager, like the person who has direct contact with clients in a store, like Patricio said. Yep. So I will call that person the operations manager because the person that is day to day in front of the business, what we call the front manager, 
is the operation or the operations manager. All right, good. You got the idea, yes? So what we project managers need to do when we have a project is to think each one of these managers, each one of them, they are managing a team of people, each one of them. And I need or I want the best person of each one of those teams. I mean, not each one, no. But I need the best person of one of those teams or few or many of those teams in order to create the project team. All right, so that is the first principle of how to manage project human resources is the negotiation of the trading of roles within the organization for you to develop your project team. All right. Sorry guys, just give me one second and looking at, at something here. Tell me guys, how are you being? Tell me something about, about you guys. Just need to find a PowerPoint here. How is everyone been, going? Good. Been resting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> very lucky <laughs> i had a lot of i had a lot of work <laughs> the last two weeks so, so it is it is good Was, to have a break yeah it's so, good to have a break but i think i uh rather be like Jose carlos and have a a lot of work <laughs> yeah it was it was crazy but yeah now i'm resting Oh, Let's get that silver, bro. <laughs> what about you, Santi? Did, what have you been did, doing? Man, I was so sick, like for three days. You cannot imagine, mate. So I was just in bed trying to recover. I was, I was really, really, you know, like sick. Like haven't been in a while, like probably two years. Couldn't do anything. I was just in bed, man, trying to trying to recover from this. Oh, wow. What, what were you sick from? No, just a simple cold or flu or something like that. But man, it wasn't nice. Let me tell you, it wasn't nice. Oof, Oof I'm sure. Yeah. Jeez. Did you see the, the race the last weekend? The F1 race? Yeah. I didn't. I, my brother no, no. did. I didn't see it. I heard it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, really. What race? Like, Checo Perez was like in the 11th place and he ended up in like fifth or something like that. Yeah, but he didn't start in 11 because, because he had a problem with the, with the car. Okay. And yeah, I started uh, yeah, the, the, last, the last place. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I'm so glad that there's uh, finally, because, you know, to be honest with you, there's not many Mexican, like, international athletes. Well, there were not many, but now we're having more and more international athletes. So you have, like, Checo Perez in, form, in F1, and then uh, Raul playing for Wolverhampton. Uh, it's so cool, man, to yes. have, like, more Mexicans, in, like, recognize Canelo, I hate, I hate Canelo, but I'm so happy that he is Mexican. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it, it's really, really good. 
But if you if you have the chance, see the see the race. No, I'll, really I'll definitely crazy. check it. I'll definitely watch it on YouTube because I heard that Checo was in. He was like he recently got it with Red Bull, right? He's playing. Yes. He's racing for Red Bull team. Yes. So now. This This is his first race as a Red Bull racer? Yes. Wow. No, I definitely have to check it out. <laughs> are, you a, are you a racing fan, Jose Carlos? Yes. Yeah? Oh, that's awesome. Yes. More of Mercedes, but and now mm. I'm, I'm supporting Lam- Checo. It's the Le Mans, right? The Le Mans Mercedes? Is it, sorry? You know those? Uh, is it the F1? Like those Mercedes, the Le Mans, Le Mans, is it called the Le, team? Le Mans, yeah. Le Mans, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the the Mercedes team, huh? Yeah, and also in Le Mans races the Porsche team, Porsche team. Oh, Porsche! Right, 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 right. I used to watch the. Uh, you know where they race like uh, concept cars. And Audi and Mercedes and all these other brands are racing in it. And so they have all these concept cars that can run up to like 300 kilometers per hour. Something crazy. Yeah. You've probably uh, seen it. It's not the Formula E? I think it's FE. Yeah, Formula E, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen it. It's so cool, man. Those Electric cars. cars. Are- Man, yeah, exactly. the, the, the Formula E is amazing, man. That is the future, I reckon. Yeah, it is, it is. It's just so cool. All right. And did you see that they they use like a power boost, like in the Mario Kart? I know, I know, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Wait, let me just do this. One second. Uh, I've been watching a lot of, um, I think, uh, cause you know, I saw it, I saw the Formula One. I didn't see it, but my friends went to the Formula One in Shanghai. There's a race in Shanghai. And my brother was telling me that maybe we should go and check out the F1 uh, next year, if, if there is one. I mean, if we're able to, like, you know, attend. But I, back in Mexico, they were Mexico City. They were so cool, huh? It's very, very expensive. I know. Uh, yeah. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if it cost maybe two thousand pesos. Some yeah. some places. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I saw I saw tickets that were up to like four hundred dollars, like eight thousand pesos, something like that. All right, guys. Um, now let's have a look at the following. We're just trying to find the right information for me to present to you guys. Look, when we think about the project human resources management plan. Let's think about this square here, all right? This is what we need to develop. We need to develop a plan for us to manage the people that is participating in the project. For us to be able to do this, we need some inputs. We need some information that will allow us to develop that human resources management plan. The first input that we need is the project the project plan. So we need to understand what is the project scope. We need to understand what is the project goal. We need to understand who is the project sponsor. We need to understand what is the work breakdown structure. We need to understand what is the project benefit. We need to understand the project, all right? Before we define, all right, what is the team that we need? We need to have an understanding of what is the project all about. But also, you will need to have access to 
the organization processes. All right. Why? Because every company does things a little bit differently. So you need to find out what is the process for you to get or for you to call in that people that you want to work in your particular project. So inputs that you need, you need the project plan, you need organization process, and also you will need something that is called the enterprise environmental factors. So the enterprise environmental factors. So what is the enterprise environmental factors? Is everything that is surrounding the company. What is the position in the market? What is the financial situation? What is the competitive environment? What is the social environment and the political environment? You need to do a, or you need to have an understanding of what is happening around the company. Usually project managers, they do something that is called the pest analysis, yes? In order to understand what is the organization's environmental factors. Um, what is the pest analysis? Anybody has an idea what the pest analysis is? Right. We talked about it uh, in, in our last class, correct? Yeah, it was the, um, the political, environmental, um, social, and technology analysis. That's it. That's it. So when we run that analysis, we have an idea of what is happening around the company. Hmm. So we can manage better what is the source, what is the input that will allow us to define what is the kind of people that we need in our projects. So these three things that we have here are inputs. Inputs for us to define the project team, right? We need to understand what is the project plan. We need to understand what is the organizational processes, the quality process, the quality processes, how things are done in the company when you want someone to be moved from one department to the other department. And you also need to understand what is going around, what is happening with the company in terms of the market in which that company is competing. Hmm? For, uh, for you guys to do that, you can take advantage of the pace analysis. All right, fantastic. Now, once we have done that uh, analysis, we also will need some tools and techniques in order to define properly this project team. So, the tools and techniques will go down here. The first tool that we have available for us to define the project team in the company is the organization chart, the organization structure, all right? So what, these are the tools. So these are the inputs And these are the tools. What is the first tool that we have available? The organization chart. So obviously, obviously, this is one of the things that we already have in our documents in order to support our project. We already have the organizational chart. We discussed that last unit as well, remember? that one of the important things that we need to have in order to manage stakeholders is to know where they are located in the organizational chart. So we already have that. We already have that. We need to use again, not to manage them now, but to invite them to participate in our team. We need to have a look at that organizational chart one more time. 
for us to properly define what will be the project team. All right, also another tool that we have here are called or is called meetings. Why? Because we can run a series of meetings for us to interview people that potentially could be part of the project team. So how we do it? We have a period of time within the project that is specifically designed for us to interview people that potentially can be part of our project team. In this interview, we are going to disclose with people that we're interviewing what is the project goal. And we are going to analyze if that particular person is more likely compared to somebody else to help us to achieve that project goal. That's what we do. I'm going to repeat this because this is very important. In the interview, we disclose the project goal. So we tell the person, hey, look, thank you for coming to the interview, blah, 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 blah. We are running this interview because we are developing, we are conforming, we are designing our project team. The project goal is X or Z or Y. How can you contribute to achieve faster, more efficiently, this project goal? And that person will reply to you. And then you are going to analyze if that person compared to somebody else is more likely to really help you to achieve that project goal. So that is how the interview is done. Hmm? It's important to remember this because it's not a job interview. It's not a job interview, no. You disclose the project goal. The, the, the word disclose means that you have something that is not public and you share that something that is private with someone. That's why you disclose it. It's not like sharing, it's disclosing. You disclose that information with that person. All right, this is our project goal. How can you help us to achieve this project goal? So you have this series of meetings for you to be able to do that. Another alternative that you have is something that is called expert expert judgment. So what is this? You invite someone, an expert in that particular area that is related to your project to do the selection for you. So you invite a third party to the mix. And that third party, which could be a consultancy company, will be analyzing who is who in the zoo and will be saying, all right, I need that person, I need that person, and a couple more to interview to find out who is more, who is more likely, who is more aligned, to the project goal for that group of people to become the project team. All right? So what, what I'm trying to do guys here is to give you an overview of how you conform your project team. Because that is the group of people that will be doing what in project management? what the project team will be doing in project management, guys. What they do. Work alongside you. They work, mm, yes, but yes and no. Remember the project manager is not working. We need to understand that the project manager is not working. So when you say they are working alongside you, it seems or looks like or could be confused 
or misunderstood with the project manager is working too as part of the team. No, the project manager is not part of the team. So what the project team is doing? The work. This is the group of people that do the work. Is that clear, guys? Now, what is the minimum expression of work to be done in project management? A task. That's it. That's it. All right. So, so that. Thank you, Jose Carlos. That's why it's important that we understand that this group of people here is doing executing the work to be done in project management and the work to be done in project management is defined by the tasks that we have in that project all right good so far as a result of this input and these tools you are going to have an outcome And what is that outcome? The human resources project management plan. This is the outcome. So this is, in a nutshell, the unit. So this unit, which, which is how to manage project human resources, is about you understanding this to perfection. For you to develop, for you to create, for you to conform that project team, you need to have a process to do it. This is the process. You have inputs. Which ones? The project plan. The organization process, how things are done in that company, the policies. And also you have an organization or enterprise environmental factor analysis. We do that using the PEST analysis. So this is the input that you will have. Then you start using some tools. What tools? The organization chart. First of all, the organization chart, you see how people is distributed in that company. Then you call in some meetings for you to interview potential candidates to become part of your team. If you cannot do it because you're busy or because you don't know how to, then you call in an external expert to do that for you. And that tool is called external or expert judgment, which is someone else deciding which is the group of people that should be part of that project team. And as a result of the interaction of the inputs and the tools, you have an outcome. What is the outcome? the definition of the human resources project management plan. Guys, this has to be super clear. And please have a look at it. Take a screenshot if you want, take a photo if you want, because the assessment is based on this. For you to demonstrate knowledge in this particular subject, you need to somehow be able to recall this. All right, any questions about this particular, guys? No, Santi, thank you. All right, good. So now that this is understood, we are going to talk about the outcome, which is the Human Resources Project Management Plan. All right?
Now we need to develop the plan. Now that we have the inputs, now that we have the tools, now we can develop the human resource project management plan. The first thing that we need to define here is the team. So now we have the team. As a result of the inputs and the tools, now we have the team. Number two, we need to define what are the roles of each individual of the team. So what is your position? How do you play? What is your title in that particular project team? What is that thing that represents? What is that title that represents the work that you will be doing in the team? We need to name it. We need to find out what is the name that represents to best advantage, what is that activity that that individual, that person will be executing in the team? What is number three? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Think about it. So we are developing the project management plan in terms of human resources. As a result of the analysis that I just did before, that we did before, now we have a team. And now that we have a group of people there that we call the project team, now we need to define what is the name, the title that will represent the actioning of each one of these individuals and we give a role. What is the number three? The task? Just, just before. The responsibilities? That's correct. That's correct. Well done. Well done. We need to define what is that that they need to be responsible for. What is that that they need to give us as an outcome? We need to define what is the level of accountability that they have in terms of the task that we are going to give them. We need to find out if they do achieve the task that they need to achieve, how we are going to reward them as a result of that responsibility. Because if you give them a responsibility, you also need to give them a benefit. Because if they become really good at doing that, and in doing so they achieve the task, we need to reward them. So understanding what is the responsibility of each one of these roles within the team is of paramount importance. Number four, we need to drill down from general to the particular. So we need to drill down that we now, we now have a team. We understand what is the role of each individual within that team. We understand what is the level of responsibility of each person within that team. Now we need to define what they actually need to do. How do we call that in project management? Jose. 
the tasks. All right. Fantastic. Now, we have defined what is that piece of work that they need to execute. But there is an issue. And the issue is that the individual will not be working the entire project, at least not all of them. So then we need to associate that task with what? Think about it, Patricio and Jose Carlos. This individual will not be working in the project from day zero to day till the end of the project. So we need to associate those tasks with what? With the timeline. With the timeline. To find out when that individual will be playing. Yes. Fantastic. And finally, we need to find out if that individual, as a result of understanding what is his or her role, as a result of understanding what is his or her responsibility, as a result of executing, executing that task in a particular timeline, we need to find out if they did well or if they didn't uh, do well. So we need to measure them against what? We need to measure the outputs against what? How do we know if someone is performing to best advantage or not? By having in place in this human resources project management plan what? Um, the KPIs. That's it. That's it. Now, once we have finished with this, we need to release the team. which means that we need to get them back to the original departments. Or we need to find a different project for them. But that is not part of the human resources project management plan though. But you need to understand that it's your responsibility once that person has completed that cycle, you need to send that person back is okay department option one option two find a new project for that person Okay, guys, so this is more or less how you do the human resources project management plan. You have the team as a result of the exercise that we did before. Then we define the roles of each individual. Then we define the responsibilities. What is the level of responsibility they're accountable for? We define the set of tasks that they need to achieve in the project using the technique WBS, which is the work breakdown structure. Then we define when they will be playing within the timeline of the project. We define the KPIs for us to find out if they perform to best advantage. When this is completed, we release them, which means that we send them back to the original team or we find a new project for them to continue working. We cannot just leave it up, that, up here because what about the people? 
we need to manage them in order for them to continue working as they were doing before they join our project. All right, guys, any questions? No, thank you. No, Santi. All right, thank fantastic. You. So it's 9.50. Let's have a 10 minutes break. And then we continue about 10 a.m., all right? All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Hey guys. Thank you, Patricio. All right, now, we're going to learn about a technique to manage the project team. And this technique is called RAM. So what RAM stands for? Responsibility. Assignment Matrix. So there are many ways to develop this, but the most popular one, the most popular way to develop a responsibility assignment matrix is to use the RASI methodology. So what is the RASI methodology? A, responsibility. A, accountability. C, consultancy. I, information. How this works in real life. You have a group of people which is called the project team. And here you have the task. And in the task, you need to define who is responsible, who is accountable, who needs to be consulted, who needs to be informed. So, for example, if I have in my team, Patricio, if I have Jose, if I have Manuel, then I need to define What are those tasks? So an example of a task in project management is to deal with customers. Another potential task in project management could be to develop procurement. Another important task in project management could be to manage the finances. Another task in project management could be, give me an example, guys. To report. The reporting. Another one. Um, promotion. Marketing, promotion, advertising, yep. And you can have as many as your project needs, all right? This is just for the sake of an example of how to do 
the responsibility assignment matrix, in this case, using the methodology that is called RASI. So again, what is RASI? A, responsibility, A, accountability, C, consultancy, I, information. Which means that you need to find out who is responsible for one of these tasks, who is accountable for one of those tasks, who needs to be consulted about one of those tasks, who needs to be informed. So let's say that, for example, the person that is accountable in terms of how to deal with customers is Patricio. So Patricio will be the person that in the project is accountable for that task. It's not accountable for the project, no. The person that is accountable for the project is the project sponsor. I'm talking about the task. All right, so let's say that Patricio is accountable to manage the processes to deal with customers. All right, so Patricio will be accountable. But Jose will be the person organizing the processes for the company to deal with customers. So Jose will be responsible. Manuel is a very important person in the project. That person, Manuel, in this case, needs to be consulted. And we have someone else here, David, that needs to be informed. For example, so the person that is accountable here for this to happen and to be done is Patricio. However, the person doing the work, actually making sure that the processes for the company to deal with customers is done is Jose. But nothing can be done if Jose is not consulting with Manuel in terms of how things should be done. And David is a very important key stakeholder. Let's say that, for example, is the customer relationship management manager that person needs to be informed about how this is going. Procurement. Patricio is not accountable for procurement because the person that is accountable for procurement in this particular project will be Jose. So Jose, in terms of procurement, will be the accountable person. Patricio, nothing to do with purchasing, but Patricio has to be informed because somehow that will be affecting how the customers receive the service. So Patricio will need to be informed. Manuel will be the person actually buying or dealing with suppliers. So Manuel will be the responsible person. And David will be, in this particular case, consulted. You got the idea? So this is what we need to do. Once we have done everything that we have learned before, in our project, we need to create the run matrix using the RASI technique. There are many techniques, but this is the most popular one, and this is the one that I want you guys to learn. Very simple. It's a matrix in which you have what is the task, who is the individual working in the team, and what is that particular thing that that individual needs to be accountable, responsible, consulted, or informed about. All right? Very simple, very straightforward, but the definition of it is more complex. Now, guys, 
this is what we will be doing in our next class, which is the practical class. So this is the class, this one is the theory class, which is basically me telling you how to manage human resources in your project. But the next class, which is the practical class is, all right, now that I know this, I need to add this to my own project. And this is what we need to create to develop in our next class. All right? Is this clear, guys? Yes, it's clear. Beautiful. Take, take a photo or, or take note or something or take any screenshot because we need to use this in our next class in your particular project. All good? Beautiful. So, What have we learned so far? Patricio, Jose, what was the first thing that we learned this morning? Um, the impacts. Before. Before that. Um, um, the difference between a functional uh, manager and a project manager. That's it. So, functional versus project. Testing, now that is clear, yeah? That in this particular class is what we call an element of competency, which means that you need 100% to be confident that you understand the difference between functional and project managers. In our first class, I remember that I told you that this project manager has more power than the functional manager. And that was a very general way to see this. But now you understand that the difference lies in terms of this functional manager is very specialized in one area, whereas the project manager is a person that has a broad knowledge about the organization. Now you understand that this project manager needs to work in partnership with the functional manager for the functional manager to give resources for the project manager to have a project team. All right, good. What is the second thing that we learned today? The, <clears throat> the inputs the inputs process for us to find out how to get the project team. All right? So if we have the project team in the middle, what inputs do we need? The project plan, the organization process, enterprise environmental factors, and the best analysis. Fantastic. So give me one by one, Jose. Sorry, the project plan. Project plan. What else? Organization process. Organization processes. What else? Enterprise environmental factors. Enterprise organizational factors. And what else? the best analysis. These two are together. We do this by doing this analysis, all right? Okay. So we have three inputs, right. project plan, organizational processes in order to understand what are the policies and procedures in that company for us to deal with people. And finally, we need to understand what are the enterprise organizational factors, 
we use the pest analysis to find out what is going on. So this area here is what we refer as the inputs. Good, we learned that too. Now, for us to find out this project team, this is a very important part, but it's not enough. So we need to use some tools. Give me one of those tools that we have. Um, the organization chart. So the organizational chart. What else? The expert judgment. And I really like that one, the expert judgment, because it's very neutral. You know, like when I was running projects for Packard Australia, I was using an external body to find out who should be part of the project because it's more neutral. It's, it's, if, if you have the budget to hire an external expert to do the team selection, that will bring transparency to the project. So I really like this technique, this tool. So ex expert judgment. And what is the other one? Uh, interviews and meetings. The interviews and meetings, which is you, project manager, you having an interview with people that belong to other departments. And in that interview, Jose, what is that that you say? How do you start the interview? Um, this is our, our main goal. Yes. And how can you help us to achieve that? That's it. That's it. Remember, it's not a job interview. <laughs> it's not what is your experience where you came. No, it's this is my project. This is our project main goal. How you can help us to achieve it. That's it. And if the answer is aligned to what you want, then that person will be invited to become part of that team. Awesome. Now, these are the tools. These are the inputs. What is the outcome here? The human resources project management plan. The human resources project management plan. Now, this is the output, fantastic. But we need to define that output. We need to define that output in, in terms of the human resources project management plan. All right, good. How we do it? How we do this human resources project management plan? What is the first thing that we need to analyze? Our team. So we have the team. As a result of everything that we did before. Guys, that's why it's so important. Because we we cannot start here. This cannot be number one. This cannot be number one. But if you if you don't know project management, you will think that the first thing that you will do is to define the team, isn't it? But these three steps are needed for you to get to this team. So it's quite confusing, I know, because it, it, it's kind of, all right, of course, if we are managing our project team, we need to define the team first. No, <laughs> no. We need to understand the difference between functional and project management. We need to understand how to manage human resources in a team. We need to become very transparent in terms of what that plan is. 
for us to then define the team. All right, good. So we define the team. What do we do afterwards? Define the roles. Number three. Um, tasks. Not yet. Um, Not yet. Oh, responsibility. Yes. Number four. Um, the tasks. The task. Number five. The timeline. That's it. You see how logical it is? Then the timeline. Number six. Um, the KPIs. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. And once we have this done, we finish with the project. And then we need to do what? Once we finish with the project, what, what we need to do with the team? Uh, and we release the team or, and, and find them another project. Or? Return them to where they were before the project. Fantastic. Release. Guys, fantastic. That's it. That's it. That's it. So we have learned this today, all right? Really good, really good. All right, any questions in terms of what we have learned? Is it clear? All right, beautiful. Now we need to talk about something that is very important that is called rewards. Rewards and recognition. You need to define if the individual working in that project will have a benefit in terms of the money, the salary that that person is making. Because if you don't have that structure ready, it is very, very likely that it's going to be very, very difficult for you to invite people to the project and for the people to say, yes, I want to become part of that team. So I want you guys to understand this. This is the project team, and this is the company departments or the organization departments. People is working here, people is not working there. A hundred percent of people in the company is working in the company departments. Here, you have zero percent. You need to move some individuals from those departments, the ones that you want after result of the interview process, you want to move them from here to there. Do you think that people will move just like that? No. No, no because they already have a contract. You know what I mean? They don't need to accept your, your call for them to be part of that team. They could tell you, no, sorry. And they are, they, they, they have the rights to say no, because there is not a contract that is asking them to join the team. So how do you make that possible? How do you do so someone that is comfortable working in his or her department you know, knowing exactly what he or she needs to do, the hours that he or she needs to work, 
the processes and technologies that a person needs to manage. How do you get that people to say yes to you when you say, look, we are doing something different. We don't know if this is going to work. We want it to work. It could be a lot of work as well. How do you move people from here to there by having a rewards and recognition program? Do you guys remember what we discussed in our previous unit that was called a managed project stakeholder engagement? Do you remember what were the drivers for people to connect with you? One driver. In our last in our last unit, we were discussing, all right, if you want to engage with people, you need to find out what is that that makes them move. Um, recognition and money. All right, so let's talk about that for a second. Recognition. Money. What else? It was time, I think. Yeah. To so, be power. What is that? Power, maybe. Power. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So which one of these ones are more aligned to that individual is what you need to do in that rewards and recognition program. What is recognition? Um, like a diploma or knowledge and being recognized publicly. That's it, being recognized publicly. So you create an environment in which if you have an individual that is looking for recognition, then you recognize his or her efforts publicly. Fantastic. What is money? If an individual was making $100 per hour, as a result of that individual working in the project, that person will not be making a hundred per hour, will be making more. So that recognition could be, all right, if you work in the project in that particular period or in that particular time, you are going to be getting not a hundred, but 120, you are going to have an increase of 20%. Awesome. What about time? What can we say to that person in terms of time? If, if what that person wants is not recognition, not money, what can we say to that person in terms of time so we invite that person to work in our team? Um, give them more free time with further family and friends. Example. Um, if a father spends 12 hours a day working, maybe he will he would like to spend eight hours instead so he can use the other four hours to be with his family. Fantastic. Now, in, 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 a practical, in a practical term, in a practical perspective, what you as a project manager, what can, how can you negotiate with that person that wants more time? What can you tell to that person? What, you know, you, you say, all right, look, I want you to work in this particular project, you will say. And I know that what you want is more time. So what can you offer, Patricio, to that person? Practically. Give me an example. How can you negotiate with that person? You need that person to work in your team. 
and you want that person to work in your team. And you know that that person wants not recognition, not money, but time. So with the recognition person, you say, all right, look, after, after we complete the project, we are going to create an article in the local newspaper about your contribution with the project. Okay, good, thank you, thank you. I will, I will work in the project. With the person that wants more money, you could say, once we finish the project, we are going to, we are going to do an accountability of all the hours that you did work and we're going to pay you 20% on top of it. All right, good. What can you say to the person that wants more money? After the end of the project, what? Um, after the end of the project, you're, you will have to work less time and make the same amount of money, maybe? Or you could say, which is the most popular one, once we finish the project, you are going to have a holiday. You are going to have a pay break. Okay. This is how Isal is negotiated, you know, and that's and that's why a lot of people really like to work in project teams, because if they can negotiate time, what happens is we finish the project and the project and some people in the project team that wanted more time, they go for a paid holiday for a paid break. So that's, that's why you say, you say, look, you work in our team. I know it's going to be hard because you need to change. You need to adapt to a new team. You need to learn new things. There is not a contract that makes you work in this team. But you have a family. You have some kids. Let's do the project. At the end, you are going to have one month paid holiday for you to enjoy with your family. Oh, really? Yeah, I will do that. And that and this particular technique is very, very popular in project management. Once people have finished with the project, then they have a good rest. Hmm? Very, very normal, this to happen. Think, think, think about the sports. You know, when you have a team of soccer players participating in an important competition, what happens at the end? they have some time until the next competition. It's more or less like that. But in the uh, corporate environment, you have people working in the team, they finish the project, and then you company, you say to them, look, you have worked very, very hard. We negotiate with you that what you want is more time. Then you go have your holidays. We are going to be paying your normal hours as if you were working. Okay, good, I like that. I'm going to be part of your team. All right? Paua, Jose Carlos, explain that to me. How do okay, you connect? Uh, I was thinking in power and influence because in some cases, uh, could be that uh, anyone wants to have a better position in the company. So true. So you true. can negotiate uh, with them. Give me an example. Give me an example. Uh, you are right, hundred uh, percent. But give me an example. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, we are working in this project for uh, I don't know uh, six months. Yep. And if the project uh, achieves the main goal, yep. you will have a, a better position in the company. A management or something like that. So true. So true. Beautiful. I like it. I love it. And I'm thinking in in another one. In in the company, uh, some people that works in in the operative has a shift rotation, and you uh, maybe negotiate with them with a normal position, like a normal shift, they, they will not rotating the, the shifts and they can spend more time with their families, for instance. And really good, really good. And that is part of the time negotiation kind of thing. Just like power is, is kind of aligned with the recognition component of this, all right? But I, I really like what you have said, so let's, Let's leave this as how we do the rewards and recognition program. So 
you need to do the rewards and recognition program in order to make people tempted to join your project team. How you do the rewards and recognition program? By understanding who wants recognition, who wants money, who wants more time, who wants more power and authority. And then you say, at the end of the project, if the project goal is achieved, you are going to have more recognition, you are going to have more money, you are going to have more time, you are going to have more power. That's it. But this needs to be done before you get people into your project. All right? So don't forget about the rewards system. The rewards and recognition system is something critical in this particular unit, which is how to manage project human resources. If- Santi, sorry. Yes. Uh, can I ask you a, a question? Nobody. We uh, We in Volkswagen have an internal survey and we have a very, very weak, um, like an, uh, a weak answer because uh, in some times the people doesn't feel recognized uh, in their job. How, how do you think or how do you feel that the company could recognize more their employees? All right, that's a really good question, Mike, because it's a very, very normal occurrence. Some companies, they are starting to change the perspective in terms of how to manage people, all right? And some companies are moving from HR to TM. So HR, human resources, TM, talent management. Hmm? When you become a TM company, you understand that people want to have a balance in terms of life, and work. And for this balance between life and work to actually be practical, you need to have a recognition program, a recognition and rewards program that is based on recognition, time, money, or power, as you have mentioned. So if the company doesn't have a plan for this to happen, then the company will not be doing TM the company will do will be doing HR, which is not anymore the best way to manage people. Again, because people now realize that there are no resources, there are individuals that are contributing to the company, not as a staff, not as a number, but as people. So for the company to get to this point, the company needs to do something that is called change change management programs change management programs are done in the hr department and the change management programs they are designed in order to move people up and to find new people down. So you have a group of people here and the change management program will find out how to take some people here up and how to take some people that is not part yet of the company up. And it's, and it's in this movement how companies grow. Now, these people, for these people to go up in terms of recognition, in terms of payment scales, in terms of power, in terms of having more time, they need to be aligned to a particular enterprise program that actually recognize the efforts that they do. So some companies,
they have something that is called a shares program, which is if the person is performing really, really good, the company offers them a share of the company. Have you heard about that? When companies offer shares, like if the person is performing really good after a period of time, the company will say, you have been working in this company for five years. Our policy is that after five years, you start getting paid a fraction of your salary in shares, which is really, really, really good. Really, really good. That is one of the best recognition programs. Hmm? But the company needs to have a policy about that. But a lot of automotive companies, they have a policy about this. If there is an individual working for the company for a period of time, X, five years, 10 years, part of the salary is starting to be paid in shares, which means that the person becomes a partner. After a while, becomes a partner of the company, not an employee anymore, or a mixture between the two. But as time passes by, that person is more a partner than an employee. So that is one of the programs that we have. The other program that we have is rotation. Rotation in terms of what? Rotation in, or oh, how can I explain this? Divisional rotation, which means that if somebody's performing well, that person is offered the opportunity to work in a different division of the company, probably in a different country. And that for some people is very, very attractive. Very, very attractive. Hmm? For example, one company that does this pretty well is Deloitte, Deloitte Consultancy. They offer people as part of their uh, rewarding and recognition system, the opportunity to work in different countries for the same company. And that for some people is the most attractive thing about Deloitte Consulting. Because how good it is to be working in the UK for two years and then working in Brazil for two years and then working in Australia for other, how good is that? I mean, if you want to work and, and travel, that is fantastic. And Deloitte is really, really good at doing that. So they don't give shares. They don't give you more money. They don't give you much recognition, but they say to you, don't worry. If you do well, we are going to be rotating you in different divisions around the globe. How good is that? Think about it. But also, promotions company can have a promotions and salary package benefits. So a salary package is when you have included in your salary things that will make your taxation more light. Hmm? So you get a package that is including superannuation, that is including pension, that is including insurance, that, in, that is including, you know, like a car um, from the company and many other things that will make the, the, the taxation, what you need to pay to taxes at the end of the year, uh, more um, beneficial to you. So there are different ways to create these reward and recognition systems, but it's all about change management. Is the company So some companies, majority of them, majority of them are focused on the customers. And then from the customers, they move up to the market. And then from the market, they move to the employees. Some companies do that. Some companies, they care the most about customers. And then how these customers are buying the products so the market share grows. And then as a result of it, they will, give, they will give a benefit to the employee. This is the most traditional methodology. If you have a change management program, that will not be like that. It will be employees first, 
customer second, market third. This is the result of a proper change management program that is focused on people working in the company. I am going to tell you something. This is the way it should be. This is the way it should be. Hmm? Companies are starting to move towards this reality in which the most important thing in the company is not the customer, is the employee. If the employee is satisfied, is happy, this employee will transfer that good energy, that good vibe to the customers. The customer service will be fantastic. As a result of that customer service, you are going to get something that is called loyalty, retention, customer retention. As a result of that customer retention, and of course, new customer acquisition, you are going to increase your market share. This is the way it should be. Don't, I'm telling you, this is the way it should be. But if your company is not yet here, don't worry is normal, is normal. So I'm, I'm going to tell you something about 10% of companies are using this model now. But this is growing. This is growing dramatically because of this new discipline that is called change management. I told you about change management the other day, I reckon. This is the cream of project managers. This is the crown for project managers. This is when the project manager has been a project manager for a while, and then it will be changing the company from the top as a consultant sometimes, all right? So this is the way it should be done, Jose. You need to organize, you need to start discussing with the company leaders, how we put the employee at the center of the company. If the employee is at the center of the company, the company always will be thinking about how can I make this person very, very happy? What is that motivation of that person? Is it money, salary? For a lot of people, it's not the case. We always think that money is the most important thing for a lot of people, and it's not the case. For a lot of people, it's about recognition. For a lot of people, it's about more time. So once you have done this, all right, the customer will get the benefits of that satisfaction of the employee. And if that happens, the market share will, will, by default, organically, will be increased because these customers will not leave. And other customers will come in as a result of other customers being very happy. And then the market share will grow. So that is more strategic than, 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 than project management related. But my, this is the only thing that I can tell you about. If you, if, if you have the opportunity to talk about change management with the leaders of your company, try to tell them what is at the center of our operation, our customers. And it's very likely that they will tell you, yes, our customers. And then you may tell them, hmm, what about if instead of our customers, we put at the center of our operation, our employees? A lot of people will be like, mm but our employees, no, they are staff. Mm, that's the problem. Our employees shouldn't be staff. Shouldn't be staff. One of the things that I have done in my career in the last seven years, eight years when doing consultancy is telling business leaders, don't call your people staff. Call them members, call them partners, call them collaborators. Don't call them staff. We need, we need to use the word employee because that is the technical word. All right? But in real life, we should be calling them with a term that is more aligned to today's um, times in which we need collaborators, we need partners, and they should be at the center of it. You know, Like in the education sector, for example, which is something I, I am very familiar with, In the education sector, usually what is at the center is the student. And then the school. 
and then the teacher. Hmm? So the, the, the rhetoric goes like this. We want you student to become part of our school. We have good teachers. That is the rhetoric usually, yeah? We want your student to enroll in this school. We have good teachers. Shouldn't be like that anymore. It should be. Teacher. School. Students. We want the best teachers to be part of this school. As a result of it, we are going to have the students. You see, you see how different it is? So for me, it's clear, but try to tell this to a company and they will say, no, no, no. Teachers are not the most important thing. The most important thing are the students. How difficult it will be for you to tell a company, no, it's not the student, it's the teacher. For example, we launched the, and, and saw it, we, we have that as the primary principle understanding. The most important thing is the teacher. Then we talk about the school as a result of that teacher. And then finally, we will have as a result the students. But if you just try to get the students for the sake of they being students, that is the wrong way to see the business nowadays. It worked in the past, yes, but right now, forget it. I'm going to tell you this, and, and believe me, this is going to be the case in five years. In five years, when you guys join an educational program, you will not be selecting the educational program because of that university or because of that school. You will be selecting that program because that teacher is teaching in that university or that school. That is going to be the future of education and I am 100% convinced about this. It's just like with companies. Companies will not be good because they have these customers, no. Companies will be this good because they have these employees working in that company. As a result of those employees working in that company, customers will be satisfied. As a result of customers being satisfied, the company will have a market share. So it's a totally different perspective. And for you to change the perspective of a company, you need to understand change management. All right. Okay, guys. So what have we learned as well now? The rewards and recognition program. Now you understand that without it, no, no way, no, you don't even think about project management. But seriously, how many companies, they rank projects without having a rewards and recognition program? A lot, but that is not good. How many companies, they tell you, hey, Patricio, you need to work in this project. Do it. And then Patricio goes, okay, and, and what is in for me? What do you mean? Nothing. Just go and do the work. How many companies are like that? Shouldn't be like that. Should be, Patricio, you were employed to be working in that department doing that function. But we want you, Patricio, to be working for three months in this project. But we understand, we respect you. We understand that this is a change. This is different. We understand that this is, going to, this is going to be disruptive to you. How can we negotiate for you to do the move? What is that that we can offer you? We can offer you more time. We can offer you recognition. We can offer you power. We can offer you more money. And then Patricio will say, all right, let me think about it. I will think what is that I want. And then the company will be doing or will be giving that benefit to Patricio. Patricio will be moving. That is the way it should be. But you guys know that in reality, a lot of companies do not do that. 
they get people from a department to work in a project. And do you think that people is happy to do the change? A lot of times, no. As a result of it, the project doesn't go well. But if you bring people to the team and everybody is very, very happy because they are getting a benefit, just remember the company is getting a benefit if the project goal is achieved, of course, you, you know that. The company is growing as a result of the project goal being achieved. You know that, yes? Well, what is happening to the team member? The team member wants to go up as well. So the project manager needs to negotiate with the human resources department how people will have a benefit once the project has been completed. And that is the entire purpose of this class, guys. The entire purpose of this class is how you, as a project manager, you negotiate with human resources what will be the benefits that people will receive once they have finished with the project. If, if, we, if we get this out of this class, we are all good. Okay, guys, it's 11 a.m. We are going to do another 10 minutes break. Then we continue. We talk for about 20 minutes more, and then we call it, we, we call it a day, all right? So have a good break. I will see you in 10. Thank you, Santi.
Okay, guys. Management process is managing the virtual teams. A project manager will use in the project the next screen. Any team naturally goes through several stages until in the next screen. Let us look into a business scenario to be able to deliver results as a team. Finally, the team is adjourned with the work. Okay, guys. Um, or the project is. All right. So the last part of this class is to understand what is the cycle of your project team. All right. What is the cycle of it? All right, the first stage or the first step is forming the team. As a result of the interviews, as a result of the meetings, as a result of the expert advice, as a result of the input, as a result of the output, which is the project team human resources management plan, now you can form the team. So this is the first thing that you do in terms of the project team cycle. You form the team. Now, once you have formed the team, now you do or you, or you realize that you will have the second part, which is called storming. So what is a storming? Storming is understanding that in this moment, at the, just after you finish forming the, the, the team, you are going to have problems. Why? Let's, let's think about that for a second. All right, so the first part, simpler. You create the team as a result of what we did before. Now you have the team, you introduce the team members. And you tell, all right, guys, you will be working together in this particular project. What will be the main problem that you will face once that team is formed? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe or could be the different per perspectives or the different ways to think. Different, about the different perspectives about how to work in the project, but usually different personalities. So it's difficult to get people to work together because you are going to find these clashes in terms of the personalities. So you need to deal with those clashes. You as a project manager, you need to use emotional intelligence. You need to use your soft skills in order to manage that potential conflict it will happen it will happen you know like when people are placed together in a team there will be clashes why because somebody will be appointed to a task and somebody else will say mm, but i wanted that task why the project manager is giving that person that task? I should be the person doing that task. The project manager has a reason for it, but sometimes it's not understood why. So the storming cycle is a difficult one to handle because you need to deal with people's personalities, with individuals' personalities, and you need to use soft skills, emotional intelligence for you to place yourself in somebody else's shoes to understand why they feel that way. And then you need to manage those feelings for the team to keep working together. All right, once you have finished with that particular step, then you move to the next step, which is called norming. So what is norming? Norming is when you develop 
trust. As a result of you properly dealing with these problems that happens in the storming phase, the team members will trust you. This is a critical moment in project management because you want the project team members to see you as a reference, to trust you, to believe in your guidance. And that happens only after you have solved a conflict. That's why you need to be okay with this step. You need to recognize that there will be problems. You need to address those problems. You need to manage those problems. How? By using emotional intelligence and your soft skills. As a result of that management, people will say, yes, he or she is my project manager and I trust that project manager. Then, once you have finalized it with the norming stage, which is people trusting you, you go to the to the other stage, which is called uh, what is this called? It's called performing. Here, in this stage is when the team members, they give you outputs. They give you results. Here is when they deliver. Deliver what? The task that they are accounted for, all right? So the performing stage is when actually things happen and the project is developed. You have the outputs. And finally, uh, and finally we finish with this stage, which is called adjoining. What is adjoining? Adjoining is when the team is dismantled after the project Complete, com completion. So once the project is completed, then you dismantle the project team. Then you dismantle the project team and you know what is next. You send people to the departments or you send people to a new project. All right? So that is the project team cycle. Let's have a look at it one more time. Stage number one, you form the team as a result of everything that we have, have done before. But because, because we're talking about people and not everybody likes each other and some people will not be happy with what they need to do, and some people will be preferring doing what the other person is doing. You're going to have a storm there. You're going to have issues. You're going to have problems. You need to deal with them. Once you deal with them, you get to a next stage that is called norming. In this stage, everything is working normally. As a result of it, you create or you develop trust. People will trust you for the very first time as a project manager. Once they trust you, as a result of that trust, people will do their work. Guys, if this doesn't happen, people will not do their work, not to best advantage. So that's why this is very important, this order. Once they start performing, they develop the project, they finish the project. And once we have developed the project, when, once we have finished the project, we do the adjoining. What is adjoining? We dismantle the project team and we give them an instruction of what is next. You get back to your department or now you are assigned to a new project 
let's negotiate the rewards and recognition for the next project. All right. Any questions about the project team cycle? All right, just take a photo as well because this is part of the assignment. So you will be asked what is the project team cycle and what are the representation of each one of these units. All right, so take a photo and a screenshot or something about this particular because it's part of the assessment. All right, and with this, I finish. In project management, you are the leader of that team and you need to define what is your leadership style. So leadership style number one, autocratic. What is autocratic? What do you think? Like authoritarian? Yes. Like very bossy? Yes. So the leader gives a clear direction and expects compliance. So autocratic means that the leader gives direction and expects compliance. So you need to say, all right, will I be an autocratic project manager? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then you need to select a different style of leadership in project management is called participative or democratic leadership. Democratic or participative leadership style. So in this particular leadership style, the leader offers guidance and encourage team's participation when it when when you need to make decisions about the project so this is when you as a project manager you go and say all right we need to make a decision let's have a meeting for us together to find out what is that decision And the other leadership style that you can choose is called delegative leadership. So what is delegative leadership? The leader offers no guidance whatsoever and lets the teams to be on their own. So the project manager is saying to project team members, this is 100% up to you. You make your own decisions. I am just observing you. You do, and then I act. Hmm? So which one of these three leadership styles is the one that you will be using in your project? Hmm? Have a look at this. Take a photo of this as well, because this is another part of the assessment. You will be asked in your project what leadership style you reckon you will be using or is more aligned to you. Hmm? Now, I'm going to tell you something, and this is the way I think, but it doesn't mean for a second that you should do the same. In project management, in project management, I do not believe in this one. Because when you don't represent yourself as a leader, it's very difficult that in such a short period of time, people will see you as a leader. So 
And it's very risky too, because you allow others to take decisions that you should be taking. Remember that in project management, you are responsible, yes? Here with this style, you are transferring that responsibility to somebody else. So I don't like this one, to be honest. But if you like it, tell me why. Hmm? Participative, democratic leadership style in project management, very, very, very risky too. Why? Because when you have a group of people, a group of people taking, making the decisions, no one is responsible for them. When everybody decided, nobody is accountable for that decision. The team is accountable. And for the project manager, that could be very risky too. Because if something goes wrong, at the end of the day, the project manager will be responsible. At the end of the day. And the responsibility will be why you didn't take the decision. The project sponsor will say, why? Instead of you taking the decision, why you ask a consensus for the team to make that decision or to take that decision? So I believe, I believe that in project management, you should be the person setting the parameters, setting the key performance indicators, telling people what is expected and what is the way to go. So this is how I do project management. And this is how majority of project managers operate. But you may have a different perspective about this and that is completely fine. If that is the case, okay, explain why. That's it, guys. That's it. Okay, guys, so we're going to do just a recount of everything that we have learned today. Give me a hand with the notes that you have, especially for those that couldn't assist today to the class because of the public holiday. Let's do just a last five minutes resume of everything that we learned today. All right, number one, differences between functional Managers and project managers. Number two, Patricio Jose. Um, the inputs. So, how do we call the the entire diagram? Um, it was the project team resources management plan. Yes, project management, human resources plan. Number I'm sorry. <laughs> the inputs, the tools, and the outcome. And that About is part the... of the project management human resources plan. Yes. All right. What 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 was the next the next thing that we learned? Okay. Um, the steps of the human resources project management plan, or is it the same? G give me, give me a, an, an, an indication of what, what, what do you mean with that? Uh, uh, the steps like to form t the team, the ro defined roles, the responsibilities, the task timeline, all of that. All right, so that was, once we have defined the project human resources plan, then we develop the team. 
Number four. We discussed um, the, the RAM technique through the RASI methodology. Yes. We define the RASI methodology, which is responsibilities, accountabilities, consultancy, and information. Yes. And we develop the diagram in terms of what is the task, who is the team, the team member, and a matrix that explains who is responsible, who is accountable, who needs to be consulted, who needs to be informed. Beautiful. Number five. Um, the rewards and recognition. Rewards and recognition. And the importance of it, the importance of if we don't do that, we are not doing good project management. We are just doing business as usual and project management is not business as usual. Beautiful. Number six. The project management cycle. The project management cycle. The project management cycle when it comes to develop teams. So project management, develop teams cycle. And we have the stages, all right? that we have discussed just before. And number seven? Um, the leadership style. Leadership style. All right, that's it, guys. We have learned all the theory regarding to how to manage project human resources. Next class, we apply all of this in our own project. All right, so thank you for coming today. And I will see you next class to apply everything that we have learned. Do you have any questions before we finish, guys? Uh, no, not from my side. Thank you. And thank you for your, your opinion and your answer about my concern. <laughs> no, my pleasure. Guys, did, do you feel that you have learned these concepts today? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. I appreciate it, guys. So have a good rest of the week, of the weekend. And I will see you next Saturday, all right? Yes, uh, Sandy, uh, just a, a question. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, I couldn't uh, find uh, the, uh, the classes.